certainly be in favor of Nokomis, and if it turns into a full court game, then it's going to be the Coney Rams that are going to be to their advantage, without question. Yeah, it's uh, it will be an interesting game. It's how Nokomis can can react to the pressure that they'll see from Coney, and how they can uh, you know control the tempo. Okay, let's go downstairs to hear the lineups. 44 is a junior, Tina Turner. Junior, 52, Danielle Brown. Sophomore, number four, Emily Lamour. Freshman, 21, Jamie Nye. For the home team Rams, coached by Paul Bashan, beginning with number 12, senior, Lynn Kanoya. 21 is a freshman, Erica Pridham. 23 is a junior, Heather Wood. 24 is a freshman, Reagan La Rochelle. Junior number 30, Cindy Blaze. Sophomore 32, Mary Beth Coughlin. Freshman 33, Christine Huber. Now for your starters, beginning with the Lady Warriors, the sophomore four, number 32, and Kelly Bowman. For the Rams, the freshman guard, number 20, Amy Bashan. The Lady Warriors, the junior guard, number 14, Betsy Buker. For the Rams, the junior guard, number 22, Kelly Duffy. Lady Warriors and Junior Guard number 20, Laura Grumbach. For the Rams and Junior Forward number 34, Angela Baldwin. The Lady Warriors and Junior at center number 50, Tanya Walker. For the Rams and Junior at center number 42, Tammy LaFerriere. The Lady Warriors, the senior forward, number 30, Rhonda Erskine. For the Rams, the senior guard, number 31, Alicia Farrell. Your officials for this game, Mr. Shaw, Mr. McCatton. Okay, two Aroostook County officials for this one, Len McCatton and Roger Shaw. I think we're going to get some signs early, Dick, as to what the tempo of this game is going to be and who's going to be able to control it. And maybe that will tell us uh, how the game's going to go. Yeah, I think even right off the tip, if, uh, if Nokomis comes up with the ball, they're going to see immediate pressure. Pony will be playing in the passing lanes all, all morning long. And uh, obviously, Nokomis would like to have a good tempo. Both teams are very young, and uh, both teams only start one senior. so. You know, the question is with Coney, how are they going to react to the tournament pressure? Well, if I know Paul Vash on it and what he's done for them, I'm sure they'll be ready. Okay, it's going to be Kelly Bowman and Tammy LaFerriere. We're about ready to get game number three of an eight-game day here on WABI, WAGM, and AM91 Radio. Tap is going to be controlled by Bowman. Out to Basham, it's penetrating. Nothing there on the right side to Farrell. Out top to Bashon. Inside to try to go. Ball's going to be knocked away by Bowen. It's Bowman. It's stolen by Buker. Grumbach working against Farrell. Takes the ball baseline. Ball's going to be knocked loose. And Farrell's going to be called for the personal foul. This is a good, good, aggressive offensive play by both teams. Results in a first foul of the ball game. We can see Nokomis immediately taking the ball right to the basket. And in uh, with Laura uh, Grumbach, you've got one of the finest players in the state also. Really an exciting player who played on the AAU team that was coached by uh, Paul Vachon this summer. And Along with the first one. She and uh, Kelly Bowman were both a part of it. Those kids could take over games at times. The second one by Grumbach is good, and it's 2-0 Nokomis. Just 20 seconds into this one. Vashon, cross half court. 
to Duffy on the right hand side looking to go inside nothing there the drive and she's going to be blocked on the drive and stolen away by Grumbach good defensive effort by Grumbach she gets it to Bowman on the baseline shot up by Bowman is no good and there's going to be a foul this time inside on Bodwin so interesting strategy right now you see Nakomis going right at Coney Nakomis certainly is not intimidated and uh, again with the two key p players there they uh, they immediately want to establish themselves offensively. First shot up by Bowman is off the front of the rim and no good. She has another. If you remember last year too, Nakomas did very, very well in the tournament for three and a half quarters against Lawrence. They certainly did. They played very well down to Waterville in the preliminary game uh, to get in and then came up here and held Lawrence at bay for quite a while. Bowman misses the second. vashon has got it. She's gonna go coast to coast off the glass. No good, rebound to 34, which is Bowdoin. She misses, and rebound to Kelly Bowman. She gives it to Grumbach, who's working against man-to-man -man pressure of Farrell. On the right-hand side, gets it to Buecher. Steps on the three-point arc, shot is good, but it's two, her foot just over the three-point arc. Nicomas up for nothing. Vashon working against defensive specialist Rhonda Erskine of Nicomas. Farrell gets it baseline. Inside they go to Leferriere, ball's knocked loose by Buecher. And it's going to stay with Coney. Nice play by Betsy Buecher on both ends, really, to, to hit that outside shot and come back and double down on the post. She's a good shooter, very, very active player. Inside, the ball's going to be knocked loose this time by Bowman, and it's going to stay with Coney. Dash on the 5'7 freshman guard for Coney. Will key the ball inbounds for the Rams. Bowdoin. Back to Vashon. Inside they look to Bodwin. Turnaround shot by Bodwin's no good, but she's going to be fouled by Walker. Very good low post move by Angela Bowden as she turned to the inside, faked up, then stepped through and uh, got the contact for the foul. And she's going to be rewarded with that nice move with two foul shots. Off the back of the rim, no good. On the first one, 6.39 remaining, period number one. Nicomas leads it 4 nothing. The 5'9 junior forward, Bowden, has the second and all that. Tony's on the board, it's 4-1. Full court, man-to-man -man pressure by the Rams. Something different as far as Paul Vashon's concerned. All right. <laughs> he loves to play be... the whole 94 feet. Ball's going to be knocked away, we're going to have a tie-up. Possession arrows that belong to the Warriors. A good hustling defense that time by the Rams. Comas will key it in right in front of the press tribal, across from where we're located. They get it into Buker, working against Laferia. She takes it to Laferia, gets by her, shot's no good. The ball's gonna be stolen on the outlet pass by Walker. Buker out top to Grumbach, working against Farrell. 15 footer by Grumbach's good on that. I'm telling you, she can take it over. If she starts lighting it up, watch out. And it's 6-1, Nicomas by five. Ronda Erska with a reach-in foul that time on Amy Vashon. So difficult to guard Amy Vashon because she'll come right at you, put you on your heels, then go off the left or right shoulder. And it's tough not to commit that foul. Very quick defensively. Vashon on the left-hand side to Farrell. You get it inside to Bowden. Turn around by Bowden's off the rim, no good. Rebound Walker to Grumbach. Tony do, does such a nice job of picking you up right away. Drive by Grumbach's off the glass, no good. Rebound Duffy. Gets it to Vashon. Trying to get the fast break going. Inside they, they get it to Laferriere, no good. Rebound's being knocked around. Finally controlled by Laferriere. And she's going to be called for steps as she tried to control the rebound. Thomas basketball, they'll have to go the length of the floor. Just trying to do a little too much too quickly and shuffle the feet in that, uh, in that possession. Lara Shell comes in for Coney, replacing Laferriere. Make him a little bit shorter, but a little bit quicker. And the ball is going to be dribbled out of bounds by Laura Grumbach, and it will go over to Coney. I think the one concern I would have right now if I were Nokomis and Coach Charlie Wing is the pace. Even though your head's 6'1", 
They need to keep this pace up for a long time. That's going to be hard. On the back screen, Amy Vashler gets the ball right on the block and lays it in to make it 6-3. The lead's cut to three. Bowman working against pressure. Ball's going to be knocked away by Vashon, and then tipped and knocked out of bounds. On the out-of-bounds uh, play, we had to come in, and then Amy Vashon went off a back screen and made the left-handed layup. Obviously, uh, they've run that before. Mm. Very well done. Bowman gets it to Bowman, inside to Walker, shot up by Walker off the glass and in, and it's 8-3. Walker getting in good position offensively for the pass. Vashon's going to be fouled this time on the drive. It looks like it's going to be called before the shot. That foul will be on Ronda Erskine. And that'll be her second personal. So the defensive specialist, Dick, for Nokomis is going to have to come out of the ball game. it looks like. As I mentioned before, it's so difficult for, you, uh, for her because uh, Amy Vashon will come right at you doesn't give you any space to move in, then go off uh, your shoulder. And any movement to the right or left is going to create a foul. First shot up by Vashon is no good off the side of the rim. She has one more. She gets to the foul line a lot of times during the game, just in those type of situations. 5-7 freshman guard. Second one is no good, rebound. Not around. We're gonna have a tie up. This time the possession is going to belong to Cody. They'll have it underneath their own offensive basket. And Amy Vashon will key it in. Working against Draper. He just ended the ball game, replacing Erskine. On the right-hand side, Lara Shell shot up. Good. And that makes it 8-5. Another freshman who's got a great future at Coney, Regan Lara Shell. Ball's going to be knocked away in the press. It's going to be thrown out of bounds. As we have Coughlin in the ball game. Mary, Be Mary Beth Co uh, Coughlin will give you a lot of defense. And uh, will really put a lot of pressure on the guards. Coach Vashon said she also likes to shoot the threes. And speaking of <laughs> which, off the front of the rim on the, that first attempt by Coughlin, no good. Rebound off to Lara Shell. Inside, they try to go to Boat. She's going to be fouled. And it looks like they're going to call that one on Walker. So 4-11 remaining, period number one. Eight to five in favor of the Warriors from Nokomis. Bash on the key to bounce, but ball stolen away by Laura Grubback. This time, Kanoy is working at Grubback. Ball's going to be knocked away from Buker's hands by Vashon, but Nokomis will keep the ball. Walker will come out, and Danielle Brown, 5'7 junior forward for Coach Charlie Wing, is into the ball game. Ball's going to be knocked away again by Vashon. Ball will stay with the Charlie Wing Coach Warriors. They get to run back on the baseline outside the three point arc. Working hard to try to drive baseline, nothing there. Brown with a short shot, no good. Rebound controlled by Coney. Knocked away by Bowman, Bowman and stolen off the glass and in. Nice play, Kelly Bowman. And it's 10-5. Long up court pass is going to be tipped away. It's going to stay with Coney. Great effort that time by Kelly Bowman. Kelly Bowman did a nice job of uh, looking for the defensive playoff right after that rebound. Founder was able to strip the ball and get herself a layup. Ball's well, going to be knocked loose on the inbounds pass again. This time we're going to have tie-up situation. This one belongs to the Warriors. Oops. Well, they pointed to the Warriors. Shot is up this time by Knoyer. No good. Rebound off to Nokomis. Euchre. Up to Brown. To Bowman on the baseline. Ball's going to be knocked away. It's going to stay with the Comas. In the Comas' situation, when they've got a great outside shooter and a penetrator such as Laura Gumbrak and Kelly Bowman on the inside, you are a very dangerous team. Speaking of the dangerous, uh, run back, excuse me, takes the ball to the basket, lays it off the glass for two, and it's 12-5, the largest lead of the ballgame. 
Shot is going to be blocked that time. But La Rochelle had her shot blocked by Bowman. And it's controlled by Grumbach. Off to Buecher, crosses the timeline. Baseline to try to go to Bowman. There's going to be a foul this time on Bowden. Well, Laura Gumbrack doing a great job of penetrating to the basket. Going to cross all the dribble on the outside and taking it to her left right to the basket. The Ferry Air back into the ballgame for Coney. His coach Paul Vashon uses a lot of people. Kind of heft to in that up tempo style that he likes to play. Steal by Vashon. She's going to go coast to coast and lay it in. The basket comes and she was fouled. This time it's going to go to Draper. And Vashon will go to the line to shoot one, a chance to cut that lead even further. Coney doesn't allow you very many guard to guard passes. They're going to shut off that uh, guard to guard pass and, and, and force you into, into the corner with the ball. And with. Uh, with Amy Vashon and any point guard, you'd like to have two or three layups during the game from your point guard on steals such as that. And that really allows you to do so much more offensively. It gives you easy baskets. With her quickness, certainly is uh, advantageous in that situation. As she makes the foul shot, pressure's starting to bother Nokomis a little bit. Ball's going to be knocked away, but it's going to stay with Nokomis. They'll have the ball at half court in front of the press table. 12 to 8, 250 remaining, period number one. Class A, Eastern Maine, girls, quarterfinal action. Ball's going to be knocked away and controlled by Coney. Farrell's going to lose it to Grumbach. Working against Farrell, Grumbach takes it to the hole, and she's going to be called for the foul. Farrell will pick up the personal foul. You can tell which side we're sitting on <laughs> as Farrell picks up her second personal. Okay, as, as we see the ball coming down on the left side, Mary Beth Coughlin always on the dribbler. And we've got great hustle underneath. We make the pass, but off the hands of Alyssa Farrell and Laura Gumdrek right there all the time. Grumbach is rewarded with foul shots. She makes the first one. She has another. And the 5'9 junior guard makes both of them. It's 14-8, leads back up to six. Warriors by six. Long shot by Coughlin. Three-pointer is good. I tell you, that was an NBA three-pointer. It was NBA range. Grumbach working hard against Coney's man-to-man -man pressure. And Coughlin, after making a great play in the three-pointer, is going to foul Stevens, who just entered the ball game for the Warriors. She was a little upset with that foul, but you really can't argue with that because you're playing aggressive. You know, early in the year, I think it was around preseason time, Somebody told Paul Vashon that uh, Mary Beth Coughlin shouldn't take as many three-point shots. And he says, with as hard as she works defensively, she can take as many three-point shots as she wants. And uh, with that type of confidence, she will make more uh, than you expect. What a great save that time to keep the ball in the Comus' hands. Danielle Brown comes on the sideline and makes a great play. Bowman gets a baseline, lays up off the glass, no good. Rebound's going to be knocked out of bounds. It's going to stay with the Comus. Kelly Bowman, for, for a girl that size, does so well of taking the ball to the basket. She was out on the wing, crossed over, and took two dribbles and just missed the shot. Long pass out to Buecher. Three-pointer by Buecher. Is good from the top of the key. Betsy Buecher connects for three. It's 17-11. Nekomis by four, uh, six, excuse me. Inside, they get it to the door. Nothing there. Look at her here. And on the rebound, there's a tie-up. This one belongs to Nekomis. And Betsy Buecher says, if they can do it down to that end, I can do it here. And, and she's a, fa a fabulous shooter. Okay, Buecher working against full court pressure. Gets it to Stevens. Working against Coughlin. Stevens got to get it across. They finally do. They get it to Buecher. Buecher's going to be called for steps. Okay, Larishell will take it inbounds. He gets it to Vashon. She'll work against Stevens. Coughlin on the baseline right. Working against Grumbach. 
Long shot this time is no good by Pridham. And on the rebounding action, we're going to have a foul. And it's going to stay on this end of the floor. Amy Stevens will pick up the personal foul. And Amy Vashon will key the ball inbounds for the Rams. They trail by six, 124 remaining, period number one. Coughlin, blocked by Grumbach. What a great play by Grumbach to block that three-point attempt by Coughlin. Coughlin's going to take the ball to the basket, but she's going to be called for a play control foul as she's got a little bit out of control. McComas doing an outstanding job here of, of hanging in there, and with Laura Grumbach, it just tells you what a great athlete she is. Well, she does so many things well, as evidenced by that play right there. Full court pressure still being applied by the Rams. Ball's going to be knocked away and stolen by Vashon. Inside, they try to get it knocked away. This time, stolen by Amy Stevens. Gives it to Sister Penny. Stevens to Grumbach on the right-hand side. Tries to drive baseline. 15-footer is going to be blocked and knocked out of bounds. This time, it stays with the Warriors. One of uh, Charlie Wing's biggest concerns, I'm sure, is how much Laura Gumbrack is going to have to handle the ball for him. And just being tired out by the time that fourth quarter comes around. No question. Brown on the left-hand side, drives the middle of the lane, nothing there, ball's gonna be knocked loose, finally controlled by Brown. Gets it to Draper, out top to Amy, St uh, to Penny Stevens, excuse me. Ball's gonna be knocked away and stolen this time. By Duffy, she lays it up off the glass and in. And it's 17-13. Penny Stevens working against full court pressure of Duffy. Sure, Nicholas will be more than happy to settle for the last shot here. Let's see what happens. Buker to Draper, to Bowman baseline. Short shot by Bowman is good. And it's 19-13. Vashon working against Stevens. They get it inside to LaFerriere. Ball's going to be knocked loose and controlled by Draper. And there's going to be a foul on Duffy. OK, we got Duffy making the steal. Anytime you, you expose the ball in front of you uh, to one of the Coney players, you're going to run into trouble. And, and defensively, they're just after it all the time. Their guards are so active defensively. You're going to get some of those. First shot up by Draper. That was a big good. play by Tanya uh, Draper down here because she doubled down on the post, got the steal, and then as she uh, started up court, got fouled, and it allows them to pick up another point just before half. Second shot was an air ball, and with 10 seconds left, the lead stays at 7. 20 to 13 in favor of the Warriors. Get it inbound to Vashon. Pushing it up the floor against Stevens. Takes the ball to the middle inside LaFerriere. Long shot by Duffy. No good. Rebound Bowman, and that's going to end the first quarter. The score at the end of one. 20 to 13 in favor of the Columbus Warriors. We'll be back in 60 seconds. Okay, back here at the Bangor Auditorium. Tom Winston along with Dick Meter. The second period of play in the second of the four. Eastern Maine Class A girls quarterfinals. Coney and Nokomis. Nokomis leads at the end of one by seven. Coney has the basketball. A little backdoor play. Shot is going to be blocked by Bowman. And she's going to be called for the foul. So Kelly Bowman picks up the personal foul. That'll be her first. And both teams now in the bonus for the remaining 749 of period number two. Lara Shell. Dip, shoots, good. All that. And it's 20 to 14. Five, seven, freshman forward for Coach Vashon. Dip, shoots, and off the back of the rim, the front of the rim, and in. Definitely a shooter's bounce there. And it's 20 to 15. Lead, lead is cut to five. Bowman leads it by five. Bowman bringing up against the pressure. Inside. Gets it to Erskine. Erskine lays it in. Nice shooters for all there. 22-15. Oh, 
Well, so far, Nikomas has had an answer for pretty much everything Coney's thrown at him. Nice play by Vashon. She can't convert on a layup. And good defensive effort that time by Betsy Buecher causes the tie-up. It'll be Nikomas basketball. Kelly uh, Bowman showing what a nice player she is, both on the perimeter and inside, as she takes the ball about 70 feet, then makes the pass into Rhonda Erskine at the block. This time, ball's going to be knocked loose, and the Rams are going to get it. Basha will key it in. Gets it inside to Lara Shell. Shot is up and good. It's 22 17. Buker's going to have it knocked away on the full court press. Remain with the Comas up in front of the press table. The opposite side of the floor from where we're located. Bowman to key it in for the Warriors. Gets it into Buker. Buker working against Vashon. Gets it to Grumbach who crosses half court. Working against Kaufman. Inside to Erskine. Erskine turnaround shot is up and good. So Erskine with a couple baskets and it's 24 17. Vashon on the left to Coughlin. Long three pointer by Coughlin. It's good. And it's 24 20. The Comas by four. More full court pressure. Coughlin working run back hard on the sidelines. Coughlin. Runback's going to take it to the hole. She's going to be fouled. And the basket goes. It's going to count. And she'll go to the line with a chance for a three-point play. Don't give an open lane to Laura Grumbach. Wonderful job of taking the ball to the sideline. And again, Angela Bolden not quite getting there in time. She's got to get to the block on that so they don't have any space to go up with the right hand. Shot by Grumbach is good. And Nokomis answers the three-pointer by Coughlin with a natural three-pointer of their own to make it 27-20. Or should I say an old-fashioned three-pointer, yes. right? <laughs> Don't see as many of those now as you used to. Inside, Vashon with the ball. Stepped short off the glass. It's good by Vashon. Nice move by Vashon. The lay it in left-handed off the glass. 27-22. Coney trails by five. Grubback working against all kinds of pressure. Buker to Bowman. Shot by Bowman's no good. Rebound's going to be knocked loose and controlled by Vashon. She gets it up to Larishell. Larishell's going to be fouled by Bowman. And both go down pretty hard. Bowman went down, excuse me, Grubback went down on Larishell's leg. She's all right. This is Amy Vashon doing a nice job of keeping her pivot foot on the floor and with the up fake and then stepping through and making the left-handed shot. For a freshman. <laughs> and she is uh, fundamentally very sound. First shot up is no good. But she's probably the bat. Amy Vashon's probably not played a lot of basketball before this year. She's yeah. Probably new, new game to her. I'm sure she's seen the basketball since she was very little. Second shot this time is good by Lara Shell. And leads cut to four, 27-23. On the right side, Erskine. Ball's going to be stolen away by Coughlin as Erskine tried to dribble and take the ball to the hole. Knoyer working against Bowman. Ball's going to be knocked loose by Bowman. Vashon gets it up to Lara Shell. Lara Shell takes it baseline, lays it up off the glass and in. 27-25, this is as close as Coney has been for a long time. They trail by two. 5-20 remaining, period number two. Buker. Cross court to Erskine. Tries to take it baseline, ball's gonna be knocked loose and stolen by Coughlin. Very, very active defensively of the Coney Rams. Knoyer, Vash on long three-pointer is off the rim, no good, rebound to Buker. It's important for Nokomis to answer here on this possession which they just did. Speak and you shall receive, coach. Nice passing. Kelly Bowman lays it in for two. Leads back to four. Penoyer this time is going to be fouled. Excuse me, LeFerrier is going to be fouled by Walker. 
Amy Vashon always looking up the court, gets it, gets it ahead. And again, Regan Larachel, again, footwork on the low post area of not committing the travel, fundamentally very sound. The Ferry Air, the six foot junior center for Coach Vashon will be at the line. And with that, we're gonna have a timeout. Scored 29-25 in favor of the Comus Warriors. We'll be back in 30 seconds. Okay, back at Bangor Auditorium, Coach Paul Vashon trying to figure out what to do to get his team on the correct side of the score as far as they're concerned. They trail by four, 29-25 with 4.50 remaining. Period number two of this Class A Eastern Maine girls quarterfinal action from the Bangor City Auditorium. Tom Winston along with Dick Meter. Interesting ball game so far. The Ferrier will be at the line for the Coney Rams. Two-shot foul, says referee Shaw. As we have a little game of musical uh, lane spots. The Ferry Air, six-foot junior center, dips, shoots, and off the front, back and good. 29-26, the lead is cut to three. Ferry Air will have another. One of the few with tournament experience for Coach Vashon makes it. And the lead is back to two. 29-27, 4.50 remaining, period number two. Pridham comes back into the ball game, replacing LaFerriere. Ball's gonna be knocked loose by Coughlin. Nicomas will retain possession, however. Larachelle working hard against Bowman, who's taking the ball out. They get it into Penny Stevens. Eddie Stevens working against Fashion gets it across half court. On the left to Erskine, looking to go inside to Bowman. They do. Shot is up by Bowman. No good, but she's going to be fouled this time by Lara Shell. Kelly Bowman very tough in the low post area. And again, against a team such as Coney that will put such great off uh, defensive pressure on you, you really got to look at screeners because they're going to be open most of the time because Coney will try to jump out and take that first pass away from you. Bowman all net on the first run. And the lead is 30 to 27. Bowman will have another. 5'10 sophomore center doing a fine job for Coach Charlie Wing and the Comus Warriors this year. Not, it's the second one. And it's 31-27, the lead four for the Comus. Vashon gets the ball kicked off and it goes in, excuse me, to Pridham's hands. Pridham is Picks it up, it's gonna be fouled. And she'll go to the line to shoot two. With Coney's style of playing of full court pressure all over, you, you end up with a lot of turnovers, a lot of deflections out of bounds, so the game becomes longer, and it makes it more difficult for the, the underdog to withstand their pressure at all times. First shot, first shot this time by Pridham is no good as Farrell checks back into the ball game for Coughlin. Good job by Coughlin this time. Pridham will have another. 5-7 freshman forward. Freshman, we keep saying that for Conan. Young team. Second one's no good, rebound this time by Farrell. Ball's knocked loose. It's gonna stay with Coney. This time, is gonna key it in. She gets it in to Laris Sheldon, gets it inside this time to Pridham. Pridham is gonna be fouled again on the inside. So Erica Pridham, the 5'7 freshman forward, doing a nice job the last couple times down the floor. With Coney's ability, number one, to penetrate, their ability and willingness to shoot the three, it really opens up the inside, and they get to the foul line a great many times during the game because of, of uh, what I had just mentioned there. Pridham this time knocks on the first one as Grumbach is back into the ball game for the Warriors, replacing Buker. She's got to be on the floor too, as much as possible mm. for, for the Warriors, without question. Erica Pridham, the 5'7 freshman forward. 
Front rims the second one. Rebound this time off to Larishell. Turn around by Larishell is good. And it's 31 to 30. Coney's within one. Kenny Stevens off to Bowman. Right on the left side to Grumbach. Grumbach takes it right to the basket. She's going to be fouled this time by Larishell. And this is a perfect example of why they need Laura Grumbach in the ballgame. She does a great job of handling the, the pressure defensively and is able not only to get the ball into the scoring area, but take it right to the hoop. Run back will shoot two. 404 remaining, period number two. First shot by Grumbach is no good. Score 31 to 30. Nokomis by one. Run back will have a chance to make that a two-point lead. Dip, shoots, and good. It's 32-30. Coney pushing the basketball up court. Vashon goes right by Erskine, stops at the foul line. Gives it off to Lara Shell. Back to Vashon. Baseline. Get it to Farrell. Farrell back out top to Vashon, working against Erskine. Out of a double stack alignment, they come. Kenora taking the ball in the middle of the lane, out top to Farrell. Vashon takes the ball. Inside, they get it this time to Larishell. Shot up, no good by Larishell. And rebound, Penny Stevens. Somebody doesn't have the person to guard it. Bowman takes the ball baseline. Ball this time is going to be stolen away by Kenoyer. Kenoyer is going to step on the out-of-bounds line. And it will be in a Comus basketball. Laura Grumbach will key it in for the Warriors, who lead it by two with 3.18 remaining. They lead it 32-30. Inside to Brown. Short shot up by Brown off the rim. No good. Rebound off to Amy Vashon. She's taking a cross the half-court timeline. Goes by Stevens. Lays it off the glass. No good. Rebound Farrell. Off the glass. No good. Rebound inside. This time it's going to be up and in. This time by Pridham. So a nice job of offensive rebounding by Pridham. And we're knotted at 32. Bowman takes the ball to the middle of the lane, lays it up, no good, rebound. Bowman, ball's going to be knocked loose. It's going to stay with the Comus. Comus pretty fortunate that time down the floor to keep possession of the basketball. Bowman to key it inbound for the Warriors. Gets it in, excuse me, Grumbach gets it into Bowman. Bowman lays it off the glass, no good. Up court, they get it to Pridham. Pridham off the glass, no good, rebound Brown. Off to Penny Stevens. Up and down the court we go. Bowman on the right-hand side. Inside to Brown. Short shot up by Brown is good. Danielle Brown makes it 34-32. Nokomis by two. 2.15 remaining, period number two. Right side, Kenoya with a long shot. Is off the back of the rim. No good. Rebound, grub back. Grumbach, I believe, is going to be called for the player control foul as she's tried to break up the court. Alyssa Farrell stepped in front of her and took the charge. And we're going to come back and go the other way. That'll be her second personal. A pretty good defensive effort that time by Alyssa Farrell. Knoyer to key it in for the Rams. Gets it into Vashon. Little isolation play here. Knoyer gets it on the left-hand side, goes to the middle of the lane, short jumper by Knoyer's no good. Rebound off to Brown. Brown doing a nice job off the bench for Coach Wing. And the Warriors from the Comus. Run back. Inside to Erskine. All alone is Erskine left hand left. Good. And it's 36-32. Great pass and great catch on the other end. Kenoya with a long three-point attempt off the front of the rim. No good. Rebound Bowman. They get it to Buecher. On the right-hand side to Grumbach. Grumbach working against Kenoya. Screened by Brown. Grumbach's going to be fouled at the shot. This time by Pridham. That you have to give a lot of credit for to Danielle Brown for the back screen. Laura Gumbach does a great job of releasing self for pressure and then getting the ball inside, and Rhonda Erskine made a nice catch on that because that's not an easy ball to handle. With 125 remaining, period number two, Laura Grumbach has a chance to increase the four-point Warrior lead. And she does. It's, first shot is good. It's 
as Larry Shaw comes back into the ballgame, replacing Pridham for the Rams. Run back, we'll have another. And off the back of the rim, no good. Rebound Brown. Brown turnaround shot is no good. Air ball. This time it goes over to Nakoma. Excuse me, over to Nakoni. Danielle Brown has given them some good minutes, though. She really has stabilized the inside, done a great job off the boards, and hit a couple shots. Lara Schell gets it to Bastion and crosses half court. Working against Steven. Brumback guarding Alyssa Farrell. On the left-hand side of Vashon, looking for the back screen. Sides to go the opposite way. They get it out to Lara Shell inside. They get it to LaFerriere. Shot is no good. Rebound Brown. And she continues to do that good job that Coach Peter was saying. Run back to Brown. Ball's going to be knocked loose and stolen by Coughlin. Coughlin's going to go try to go coast to coast. Lays it off on glass and in. It's 37-34 with 35 seconds remaining in period number two. Bowman, up court, they get it to Erskine. Shot up by Erskine, it's no good on the bunny. And Vachon, for Coney. Takes it coast to coast, shot up by Vachon, it's no good. This time she's gonna be fouled, it looks like by Bowman. As the Coney's coaching staff looks on. Coney takes advantage of the old adage, if you take the ball to the basket, most of the time there's going to be a foul called and most of the time it's going to be on the defense and they create a lot of situations where they may be a little out of control but they'll get the foul to bail them out because they've they have taken it to the hoop first shot by Vashon is good as Grumbach comes out of the ball game a little extra rest probably a good move on coach wings part at this point Vashon has a chance to narrow that lead to one only trails it by two at this point with Vashon at the line to shoot the second of a two-shot foul. She dips, shoots, and all net. 37-36, Nakomas by one, 22 seconds remaining. Second period of play. Penny Stevens working against Coughlin. Gets it to Brown. Back to Stevens. Crosses half court just in time with 10 seconds remaining. Amy Stevens off to Penny. On the right to Buecher. Long shot by Buecher off the front of the rim, no good. Rebound Farrell, nothing, Vashon gets it off too late as it's going to hit the backboard. And the score here at halftime, the Nokomis Warriors 37 and the Coney Reeves 36 will be back after this two minute break. Welcome back, uh, all kinds of music and festivities here at the Bangor Auditorium. One of the uh, most notable events when it comes tournament time is having uh, the Comus Marching Band here, or many of them. Stan Buchanan is here joining us. Uh, he is the music administrator for the Comus Area High School and the Comus Area Schools. Stan, what a, what a group. It's got to be awfully exciting being involved with this, uh, this quite big team. It is. It's an awesome band. Including, your, of course, your trip to Washington. Uh, we went to uh, Washington generally, of course, for the inauguration. We've also gone to the Berkeley Jazz Festival and won a championship there. And we spent the summer in Europe with the jazz ensemble at the Montreux Jazz Festival. What? Well, it's a full-time business. I mean, these kids are these, these kids more than a, a sports program. They're going all year round. It's a lot of work. They are highly committed young adults. What kinds of things uh, do you look for? Why are there so many kids out for the Nokomis Band every year? What makes it so popular, do you think? I think it's because we have a very strong parents organization. Our music boosters are right behind them, and they have a commitment also to the program, and they work hard. So the kids see that, and they work hard twice as hard. Is it kind of uh, something that it's grown into this size? Do you see it growing further, or does it, uh, are you pretty much plateaued as far as numbers and that sort of thing? No, we're still growing some more. Right. It's going to be bigger and better. Well, it's great having you at the tournament so we can hear some of the sounds, but I guess we should be outside on a field to hear them in their full glory. That's for sure. Thanks for joining us, Stan. Appreciate it very much, and it's a delight to have, uh, to have them here at the tournament, and uh, hope to hear them a little bit more. My pleasure, Dan. Okay, great. Stan Buchanan, of course, leader of this Nokomis band. What a super unit this is, 100 strong here today, and we'll hear them in a little bit. We'll probably hear them throughout the game. We'll be back in 90 seconds with more halftime right after this. Okay, 
Okay, back here at the Bangor Auditorium, Dick Meter with some halftime stats. Well, as you look at the scoring, first with the Coney Rams who are trailing, you've got two freshmen leading the scoring with Regan Larachel with 11 points and Amy Vashon with nine. Also, sophomore Mary Beth Coughlin has two three-pointers and a field goal uh, for eight points. So they're leading the scoring uh, for Coney. For Nokomis, Laura Gr Grumbach has 13 points and Kelly Bowman with eight. As you can see, Coney has sh shot 34.5% while uh, Nokomis, 26 uh, percent. Now on the free throw line, both teams have shot well. Coney, close to 70 percent. And uh, Nokomis has done a nice job. In fact, that's kept them right in there around 84 uh, percent. Nokomis has done a pretty good job uh, on the turnover department, too, because they haven't turned it over a great deal as many times as I know Coney would like to see them have it at, that, had at this point. And with the rebounding, uh, they've, they've both done a nice job off the boards. Nokomis fans and Nokomis band here getting into things at halftime. Their team leads by one. 37-36. We're about ready to start the third period of action. I think the key thing, Tom, for the second half is, uh, you know, physically. How long can Nakoma stay with the, with the pressure and be able to execute it against it and just the physical condition to be able to play the 84 feet here in the auditorium. I think that's a, an excellent point, Dick, because I, I really think that that's going to decide the ball game. I think that more than anything else, uh, turnovers, rebounds, anything, I just think it's going to be a question of uh, can the Comas keep up the tempo that they are currently playing at? And, and maybe they won't try to play that in the second yeah. half, but it's awfully tough not to get caught up in that game with Coney. <laughs> Little Nokomis, uh, one of the cheerleaders, got looks like he got knocked on the head or something. He's applying ice to his cheekbone. And, but he's laughing, so it can't be too, too bad. As we're starting in the second half, 37-36, 16 minutes or more remaining in this one. Farrell with a long three-point attempt is good, and Coney has their first lead of the ball game. 38, it should be 39, and it is. They finally change it to 37. Coney by two. Full court pressure. Grumbach goes behind the back, working against Farrell. 12 footed by Grumbach, no good. Rebound off to Bowman. Bowman, one dribble off the glass and in. So Nakomis answers quickly. Not to back up at 39. Long shot by who else? Coughlin. And it's 42 39. Is that the third three-pointer by Coughlin? It is. She said, I think she's three from three for four at this point. I'll tell you what, I don't uh, I don't blame Coach Vashon for letting her shoot that. Super player right there. Mary Beth Coughlin. Buker working against Farrell. Looking to go inside. The Warriors get it to Bowman, shot up. No good. But this time she's gonna be fouled by Lara Shell. We've got Lara Shell, Bodwin. Vashon, Farrell, and the fourth one would be Coughlin. The fifth one, excuse me. You've got Buker, Bowman, Grumbach, Walker, and Erskine for the Lady Warriors. Larishel takes a seat as she picks up her third personal. And LaFerriere comes in for the Rams. Bowman makes the first one. Make it 42-40. Second one by Bowman's all net. And Nokomis trails it by one, 42-41. Farrell with it left, out top to Vashon. Inside they try to go to the Ferrier, ball's gonna be knocked loose. And then they say it's off the Ferrier's hands and it's turned over to Nokomis. Comes with the basketball, a chance to take the lead back. Buker, it's in the middle of the Walker. Walker's gonna be called for steps. Trying to break the press, saw her streaking Laura Grumbach down the right-hand side, and unfortunately couldn't do it, as we see a couple of avid or rabid fans <laughs> with a new haircut. 
Looks like one of our people in the truck, huh? Mr. Bolio, I think is his name. <laughs> As Coughlin throws it out of bounds, but it's gonna be knocked loose. And Coney will keep the basketball. Vashon working against Erskine. Pretty good defensive player in Erskine. In fact, very good. Inside, they get it. This time, to Bodwin's turnaround shot by Bodwin is going to be missed, but she was fouled. Buco will pick up the personal foul. And Bodwin will go to the line to shoot two. And as you mentioned earlier, uh, Coach, one of the things that Coney does so well is they create so many opportunities by that penetration game, not only on the shot, but as uh, Bodwin did right there on the foul line. They're very simple with what they do, but very effective. They create a lot of space for people to penetrate. Somebody picks you up, then an open play is created, and they're always looking up, and by shooting the three-pointer, they're creating space underneath. This time, Coney stole the inbounds pass. Farrell put up a three-pointer, didn't go in, and it's gonna go over to the Nokomis Warriors. Bowman gets it into Buker. Up court to Erskine. Working against Coughlin. Back to Buker on the left-hand side. Long three-point attempt by Buker is off the front of the rim. No good. Rebound to Farrell. Ball's going to be tied up underneath. No, they say foul on Kelly Bowman. Looks like it was going to be tied up. But the personal foul was committed. That's three on Bowman. So with 6 away remaining in period number three, not something the coach wing wanted is to get three fouls on on Bowman. Ball's gonna be knocked loose in the press. Run back with a long three-point attempt. Good! And Nokomis regains the lead, 44-43. We're under six minutes remaining in period number three. Farrell, drives baseline, gives it inside to LaFerriere. LaFerriere's shot is up no good, and Bowman could pick up her fourth. And if she did, that's gonna be a problem for Coach Wing. She did. At this point, certainly the key play of the basketball game you cannot have Kelly Bowman on the bench and, and come out with a win against the second seeded team. Mark this down with 5.49 remaining. Bowman goes out of the game. Nokomis leading by one, 44-43. Nokomis with a little bit of pressure themselves. Laura Erskine comes up with a loose ball, then right over to Grumbach, and uh, it's nothing but net. And we're knotted at 44 as LaFerrier knocks the first one in. Six foot junior center, Tammy LaFerrier. Second one is off the front, back side around, and finally drops through. We've seen a few of those today. LaFerrier makes both, and Coney has the lead back. 45 44, Coney by one. Brown. Pressure ball, there's a bash on steals it. Long three-pointer, no good. Rebound Farrell. Working against Brown. Gets it off to Vashon. On the right side to Coughlin. Inside they try to go. Ball's gonna be knocked loose. Finally picked up by Grumbach around the foul line. Lays it up off the glass and in. And this time there's gonna be a foul on Coney. Nice hustling play just to recover the ball by Grumbach, but even a better play offensively by taking it right to the basket. Certainly a lot of hustle plays there. Ronda Erskine starting it off. Nobody could quite get a handle until Laura Grumbach picked it up and then just taking it strong to the basket, created the contact and got the roll. And the three-point play is good, and it's Nokomis by two, 47-45 with 5.20 remaining in period number three. Nice pass inside to LaFerriere, and she lays it up off the glass to knot this thing back up at 47. We've got a good one going here. Some good quarterfinal basketball being played by Coney and Nokomis. Run back on the left-hand side, working against all kinds of pressure by Farrell and Coughlin. Get it inside to Brown, back up to Buker. She says no to the three-pointer. Tries to take it baseline. She's going to be working against Vashon. Vashon's going to be called for the foul. Be her second personal foul. And it will be Nokomis basketball on the baseline. Nokomis needs to buy as much as they as much time as they can right now. Just with Kelly Bowman out and the pace of the game, if they can 
have a few of the others to step up, they'll be able to maintain their position. That's why it'll be interesting to see, especially with Bowman out, if they try to slow down the tempo a little bit to try to buy some of that time that you were talking about, Coach. On the turnover, Coney gets the basketball. They go a little backdoor play, and that's going to be to Baldwin. She's going to be fouled. This time that foul's going to go to Walker, and that'll be her four. So two starters for the Warriors with four personal fouls. Bowden. 5'9", junior forward for the Rams. Dip shoots and around the rim, no good. Amy Stevens coming into the ball game. We'll come in for Walker as Coach Wing and his staff from Nokomis looks on. Happy to be tied at 47, unhappy to have two starters on the bench with four fouls. Second shot is no good by both and rebound to Amy Stevens, who just came into the ball game. Off to Penny Stevens, working against Coughlin. Inside to Grumbach. Grumbach loses control of the ball. Ball's going to be tied up. Brown and, and LaFerriere. And it's going to stay with Nokomis. 4.27 remaining. Class A Eastern Maine girls quarterfinal action. We're all knotted at 47, Nokomis and Coney. Left-handed shot, what a nice play by Betsy Buecher. Lays it up off the inbounds pass, left-handed, gets it for two. This time Coughlin with a long three-pointer, another NBA three-pointer. It's 50 to 49, Coney. Boy, she's got some kind of range. Four for five, and it is long range. Penny Stevens gets it to Grumbach, working against Farrell. On the baseline to Buecher. Long three-point attempt by Buecher is good. No, they say two. They say two. A foot must have been on the line, right in front of the Nokomis bench. And Nokomis regains the lead, 51-50. Farrell inside LaFerriere. Bunts pass. It's good. A shot is good. Off the power move. And Pony regains the lead, 52-51. Knoyer into the ball game for Farrell. Draper into the ball game for Grumbach. Ball's going to be knocked loose and stolen by Knoyer. Off to Coughlin underneath. Coughlin's going to take the shot and be fouled. And as you can see, uh, with Mary Beth Coughlin here, I think she thinks she's at a Pepsi hot shot contest. Because <laughs> she would be scoring a lot of points. That was certainly that. A, a beautiful three-pointer from long range. Isn't that always the way, though? You pick those and you go to the foul line with nobody around you, and it's a little bit more difficult. Mary Beth should step back and put her <laughs> heels back on the, uh, the back of the key. 52-51. Pony by one, now two, as Coughlin gets the second of two. Draper to Brown. She takes it across half court, working against pressures. Ball's going to be knocked loose and stolen by Bodum. Working against Stevens, and Stevens is going to foul her, Amy Stevens. We'll pick up the foul. So the Coney pressure starting to make a little bit of a difference with a couple of Nakoma starters on the bench. Actually, three Nakoma starters, four Nakoma starters are sitting on the bench right now. You know, certainly a key time, I'm sure, as uh, Coach Wing looks up and sees three minutes and 30 seconds still left in the third quarter. Uh, if you're the underdog, you'd like to have a shot a game. Bodo makes the first one. Only with a large sleeve of the ball game, it's at three. Second one by Bodo is around, and back of the rim, front of the rim is good. Walker and Grub back to come back into the ball game. The Coney lead is four, 55-51. Balls will be tied up at half court. The possession hour belongs to the Coney Rams. Walker and Grub back coming into the ball game. And with that, Charlie Wing wants timeout with a score of 55-51. He trails by four. We'll be back in 30 seconds. Okay, back here at the Bangor Auditorium is the Coney cheerleaders and the Coney band getting into this one. 55-51, Coney by four with 325 remaining. Coach, what do you do if you're uh, Charlie Wing right now? What do you try to do? Well, he's put uh, Laura Grumbach back in, and that's going to help him a little bit against the pressure. But uh, the tough thing is not only do you have to face the pressure full court, but when you come into the offense, it's hard to take time off the clock because they do overplay every pass. 
So you're still caught in a, a situation where you've got to play up Temple, or at least forced to play up Temple. Coughlin outside to Vash on fakes the three, drives to the middle of the lane, off the back of the rim, no good. Rebound the Ferrier, no good. Rebound, it's gonna be tied up. This one should belong to the Comas, and it does. So it's a pretty good rebounding by both teams. Pretty aggressive rebounding, for sure. Coughlin, bothering Draper on the inbounds pass. Draper gets it to Grumbach. Ball's gonna be stolen away by Vasher, but she loses it out of bounds, and it will go back over to the Comas. Against the Coney pressure, or any type of pressure, it's very difficult to have success when you have to turn your back to the offense, and that's what they're creating right now. And the ball's gonna be stolen away from Brown by Coughlin. On the right-hand side, Coughlin. Back to Knoyer, long three-pointer by Knoyer, no good. Rebound to Walker. She gets it out to Buker on the left-hand side, working against Coughlin. Buker takes the ball to the middle of the lane, shot up by Buker is no good. Rebound off to Laferriere. And we're going to have a foul on Laferriere, committed against Laferriere by uh, Betsy Buker, I believe. We'll pick up her second personal with 2:38 remaining. And Conan's going to be in the one and one, and with 2:38 remaining in period number three and a four-point lead, and your team's in the one and one. You're in pretty good shape at this point. Obviously, a long way to go with only a four-point lead, but certainly the Coughlin advantage is to you. Game. Some super play by Coughlin. She sits next to Coach Vashon. I'm sure we're going to see more of Coughlin before this one's over. Erskine gets ready to check into the ball game for the Warriors. As the Ferrier has two shots, makes the first. Erskine comes into the game for Brown. Ferrier, the six-foot junior center, has another. And around the rim, no good. Rebound inside. This time by Bowden, no good. Rebound this time by Erskine. Up to Buker. On the left-hand side. Buker has it with her team, trailing by five, 56-51. She gets it inside to Walker. Back to Buker outside the three-point arc. Draper back into Walker. Shot up by Walker is going to be blocked, but they say LaFerriere fouls her. Or, no, they're going to give it to Angela Bowden. That's going to be the fourth personal foul on Angela Bowden. So, Coach Vashon up right away and getting a substitute ready to come into the ballgame. First shot by Walker is good. And it's 56-52. Lead is four. Lara Shell is going to come into the ball game for LaFerriere. So they leave Bowden in there with four personals, with 2.19 remaining. A luxury you can control with a bench as deep as they have. Run back off the missed foul shot by Walker. Rebounds and the leads narrowed to two. 56-54. Bash on coast to coast for two. It's back up to four, 58-54. Walker gives it to Draper. On the right-hand side to Erskine. Looking to go inside, nothing there. Cross court to Buker. Long three-point attempt by Buker off the front of the rim, no good. Controlled by Vashon. Vashon working against Grumbach. Underhead layup, no good. Rebound off to Boat, and she's gonna be tied up on a loose ball, and it's gonna go to Coney. Again, yeah, Amy Vashon does a great job of always keeping pressure on the defense. Uh, she's not going to come down and just look to make the, the lateral pass. She's going to attack the defense each and every time, and this time it created two points for herself. On the right-hand side, Knoyer to Vashon. Back to Knoyer. 15-footer by Knoyer is no good. Rebound off to Draper. Gets it to Buker. Working against Vashon. Inside they go to Walker. Shot up by Walker. Air ball. Rebound by Lara Shell. Off to Knoyer on the right-hand side, taking it across the half-court timeline. Vashon, three-pointer straight away. Good! Vashon hits a three in the lead. 61-54, the largest lead of the ball game for the Coney Rams. They lead by seven. Ball's going to be knocked loose on the press. Walker finally picks it up, gets it to Grumbach, crosses the timeline just in time. She's being double-teamed in the corner. Buker with a long three-point attempt. It's good! 
So Nakuma says the answer. We're under a minute left in period number three. It's 61-57. Nakuma's trails by four. Larishell on the left-hand side of Farrell. Ball's knocked loose, but retrieved by Farrell. Coney going to slow it down. Play for the last shot here. Let's see. 38 seconds remaining. This is different to see Coney go more than five or ten seconds without shooting the ball. They certainly move it up and down the court very well. Amy Vashon. They are. It looks like they are going to yeah. wait. Sometimes you, uh, your defense will be lulled to sleep in this, and a little backdoor cut, and it's a layup. Ideally, as from the coach's standpoint, anyway. Yeah, double stacked on each side, and as it gets down close to the 10-second mark, I think we'll see Amy Vashon penetrate and look to open somebody up. She tries to get it inside of the Ball's going to be knocked loose. Run back with it. Two seconds, long half-court attempt by Runback. It's off to the left, and no good. The score at the end of three, Coney 61, Nakoma's 57. We'll be back in one minute. This is where you have a young fan sipping on a Coca-Cola with uh, her dad. We start the fourth and what could be the final period of play, and the ball's going to be stolen on the inbounds pass. Nakoma said the possession. Bashon stole it. She drives it to the middle of the lane, and she's going to be fouled. If that fouls on Bowman, she's fouled out of the ball game. No, it's going to be called on Walker, and she's going to foul out of the ball game. So Tanya Walker, the 5'10 junior forward for Coach Wing, will foul out with 7.55 remaining, and her team trailing 61-57. This is going to necessitate Danielle Brown coming back into the ball game as Coach Basson whistles to his troops, shouting instructions. Walker fouls out with three points. Frustration at this point, but she's an excellent player. Be back for another season, I'm sure. She's not ready to talk about next season yet. Bash on at the line. All net. She'll have another. Certainly not in awe of this Bangor Auditorium on her first time in the tournament. She makes both, and the lead's back up to six for Coney. Well, the first time we're seeing a zone press. We've got a 1-2-1-1 one, 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 uh, full court press, but they're back, back into a zone now. So a little change up here. Bowman on the turnaround, no good. Erskine with a rebound, no good. Rebound Bowman. Ball's going to be knocked loose, and I think they're going to call this foul on Larry Shell. Be interesting in this zone defense if they stay in it to see how well the Rams can rebound out of it. Comas to key the ball in bounds, but not until we get the substitution. Interesting play out of this set last time. I don't know if it was by design or not, but Betsy Buca started up then st stepped right back into the open area and had herself a layup. They get it out to Bowman deep. Buker with a three-point attempt from the right-hand side. No good. Rebound's going to be knocked loose. Still loose. Deferia has it. And finally, it's going to be picked up by Pridham. On the right-hand side, Vashon working against Grumbach. Leferia to Farrell on the baseline. Back out to Leferia, almost stolen away. Vashon with a long three-point attempt off the front of the rim. No good. Rebound's going to be knocked out of bounds. It's going to go to Nokomis. So Nokomis down. Six with seven minutes, 11 seconds remaining. Period number four has the basketball working against full court pressure. Grumbach. Farrell working her hard. Grumbach takes it to the middle lane. Shot up by Grumbach. No good. And she's going to be fouled by, looks like Farrell. It is Farrell. And Farrell will pick up her third personal foul. So Grumbach, the 5'9 junior guard who transferred into Nakoma's a couple of years ago. We'll be at the foul line shooting two. And boy, I tell you, Coach, down six in the last period of play. You can't afford to miss these. I was just thinking, they've really got to shoot well from the line uh, here on out. And it's going to be that much tougher because of the physical conditioning aspect. Uh, Tony will weigh you down, and it becomes a little bit tougher to make those shots. Grumbach averaging 15 points on the year, has 21 today, so she's certainly well above her average. Second foul shot by Grumbach is 
second round, no good. Rebound this time to Pridham. Who gets it to Vashon? Cross in the half court, Vashon working against Stevens. Off to Knoyer, guarded by Grumbach. Back out to Vashon, working against Penny Stevens. Knoyer looking to go inside to LaFerriere. Trying to pick up an extra foul on Bowman. LaFerriere, after being fronted, gets the ball in the lob pass and lays it off the glass for two. And it's 65-57. The lead is eight for Coney. Ball's going to be knocked loose by Coughlin. Coughlin on the left-hand side gets it to Pridham, who lays it up. She's going to be fouled. The basket almost goes. But she's going to go to line to shoot two. Tony always chasing from behind. And that's going to be it for Kelly Bowman. So with 626 remaining. And Tacoma's trailing by 8, 65-57. Kelly Bowman's going to take a seat and watch the rest of this one. She files out with 14 points, just a shade under her average. But a fine game by Kelly Bowman, a fine season by Kelly Bowman. She's played well. Just uh, she ran a stretch there in about 30 seconds. She picked up two key fouls, and that really has uh, made her play tentative and uh, forced her to the bench, and obviously to the bench early in the fourth quarter here. Not something that the Comus needed at this point. Two starters on the bench having fouled out. Foul shots a miss, though. Ball's going to be knocked loose and picked up by nobody. Finally picked up by Grumbach. Grumbach. Goes by Vashon against the Ferry. Air. Ball's going to be off the rim, no good. But Grumbach's going to be called for the player control foul. So Laura Grumbach picks up her third personal foul with 6:16 remaining in period number four, and her team trailing 65-57. With that, Paul Vashon wants timeout. The score 65-57. We'll be back in 30 seconds. Okay, back here at the Bangor Auditorium. 6.16 remaining, period number four. The Coney Rams lead it by eight, 65-57. With two starters on the bench, Coach, what's Nokomis going to have to do to get back into this one? Well, it's, it, it, Nokomis has got a tough road ahead right now. They're, as you say, eight down with six minutes to go. Coney has the ball. It's, they're just going to have to make a few three-pointers to hopefully get back in the contest. And most of all, they've got to stop Coney from scoring. Laura Grumbach probably going to be a key as they get it inside to the ferry air with Bowman having fouled out. She gets the easy two off the glass, and the lead's 10. Largest lead of the ballgame for the Rams. Grumbach to Penny Stevens to Buker. Ball's going to be knocked loose. And it's going to stay with the Comas. I think Buker and Grumbach are going to have to come up real big in the last 5.52 of this one in order for Nokomis to have a shot. Yeah, they certainly will. And But to get back in it at all, they've got to stop them on the other end. They cannot give, them up, uh, give up more than another. Uh, they really can't give them 10 points probably the, the rest of the way if they, if they are to come out with a victory. Earth's going to have to line to shoot one on one. Both teams in the one-on-one -on -one for the remaining 551. This time Erskine knocks it down and cuts that 10-point lead to nine. Rhonda Erskine, a very uh, good academic student, part of the Scott IQ quiz team that Nokomis has. Very good defensive player, too. This is the second one. This time it's going to be a block foul on Laura Grumbach. Grumbach's going to pick up her fourth personal foul. And down nine, with some people on the bench, you don't want to see that happen. Well, as Amy Fashon com uh, comes down the court, she's knocked around a couple times, and then uh, finally uh, she makes the crossover dribble, and uh, Laura Grumbach can't get there in time. And th that's the fourth foul, and boy, if she's out, it's going to be difficult. This foul shot, ball's going to go over to Comas as it's knocked out of bounds. More full court pressure being applied. Penny Stevens working against Coughlin. Better get it across. 
in, lobs it, and it's stolen by Vashon. Vashon takes it to middle lane. She's going to be called for steps. Mary Beth Coughlin did a great job on the last defensive pes uh, possession of forcing Ronda Erskine to go side to side. And she wasn't able to make any penetration toward the uh, half court area. So with the Comas down nine, 67 58, 5 15 remaining, they've got to put some baskets in the hoop. Stevens with a 15 footer. Off the side of the rim, no good. Rebound, Kanoya. Ball's going to be knocked out of bounds. It's going to go over to the Coney Rams. 5.08 remaining. The lead remains at nine. This coach Vashon gets on his troops to execute properly. Ball's going to be stolen away by Buker, but she steps out of bounds on the sideline in front of the press table. Good hustling play by Buker, but it's going to remain with Coney. Pridham inbounding the ball, gets it to Vashon, working against Stevens. Takes it across half court, behind the back she goes. Frees herself up a little bit, gets it to the right to Kenoria, looking to go inside to Laferia, does. Ball's gonna be knocked loose, however, picked up by Erskine. Buker, working against Coughlin, gets it in the right to Erskine, ball's gonna be knocked loose by Pridham. So it will stay with the Comas. As Pridham comes out of the ball game, Lara Shell back in. Stevens gets it to Buker. Almost stolen away. Stevens takes it to the baseline. Gets it back up to Buker out top outside the three point arc. Working against Vashon. Looking for the baseline screen. Not there. Inside they go to Erskine. Erskine with a left hand layup. No good. Rebound off to Coney and Lara Shell. Gets it to Vashon. Vashon goes by Stevens. By Brown, gives it to LaFerriere, and Erskine fouls LaFerriere. And the constant offensive pressure of just attacking the basket puts so much pressure on the defense that uh, they're either not in position or off, they're off balance on many of the uh, trips down the court. I think that w that's what we talked about earlier in the ball game as being one of the keys, and it's proven to be true here as far as the Cody Rams are concerned. Ferrier off the back of the rim in the first shot, no good. She'll have another. Afraid, Tom, the, the final score won't indicate how well Nokomis has played for three quarters. Oh, I know. Reminiscent of last year when they played Lawrence, they played so very well and just ran into some foul trouble and got, got a little bit uh, winded. Lead here, though, is still only nine for Coney with 4-10 remaining. But Nakoma certainly can't afford to turn the ball over like they just did. Ball this time is going to be turned back over and saved by Vashon. No, they say she stepped out of bounds. This time it's going to go to Nakoma. A great hustling play that time by Laura Grumbach. Benny Stevens will key the ball inbounds from just in front of the press table. Working against Coughlin. Taking it into Buker. Let's see if they try to run some isolation. Three-point stuff. Well, they continue in their offense. They try to get it inside to Grunback. 12 footed by Grunback is going to be blocked, but Leferrier is going to foul her on the block with the body. And it's going to be two for Laura Grunback. So if you're Charlie Wing, you're going to like this. Chance to get two points with no time going off the clock. Kate Burgess about to enter the ball game for the Warriors. In that situation, if Tammy Lafreniere had been able to just position herself and put both hands up straight, uh, she would have been okay and without the foul. But a lot of times they will try to turn into the player and therefore pick up the foul. 21 points today, as you can see. For Grumbach, make that 22, and the lead's cut to eight. 67-59. Grumbach comes out of the ball game. Vashon gets it for Coney. On the right hand side. Over to Pinoyer on the left. Working against Stevens. Takes the ball to the elbow, nothing there. Kenoyer inside 
Ball's going to be knocked away and stolen away by Erskine. And knocked away this time by Lara Schell, but it's going to be out of bounds, and it will go over to Nokomis. Nokomis did a nice job on the post uh, defense that time by doubling it up as the ball came in and providing the help on the help side. Burge is going to get it to Penny Stevens, and Penny Stevens is going to be called for the foul. And that's the kind of turnover you get when you work against full court pressure for 32 minutes a game. If you're going to play against Coney, every possession is going to be challenged. Ball goes inside this time to both, and she's going to be fouled. Nice penetration by Vashon, nice dish. And Bowden's going to be at the foul line shooting two. Coming back into the ball game is Duffy. He replaces Coughlin. And they're at the point for Coney that you need to make these foul shots now just to put the game away. That uh, in the game now, so to speak, rather than to, to allow it to go on. And that shot by Coach is good. By Coach Wing, who bought some uh, time uh, for Lara Grumbach defensively. Now he's got to back in there as they go on the possession offensively after the foul shot. Really couldn't afford to keep her out much longer, but she did need a break. Second shot by Bowden is good, and the lead's back up to 10, 69-59. Buker gets across half court to Grumbach. Working against the double team. Skips it to Brown. Shot up by Brown. It's around her and good. 69-61. The lead is eight as we're under three minutes. And Coney's going to turn the ball over as Laura Shell's going to be called for the travel. Nakoma so, says we're not out of it yet. And uh, some hard work down there on the defensive end has got themselves a turnover. Trying to bring it back to six. I tell you, you give a team like this a breath of life and watch out. Run back with a three-pointer around the rim, no good. Rebound, this time is going to be inside to Burgess. And she's going to be fouled after securing the rebound. And she's going to be out the line for two. Coach Vashon better get down on the bench. Oh, no, that's, is that the fifth personal foul? Yes, it is. Lara Shell fouls out. Ferrier comes back in. Knoyer is going to come into the ball game also for Cody, replacing Duffy. Kate Burgess, the 5'6 freshman forward. First shot is good. And the lead is seven for the Coney Rams. 69-62 with 2.51 remaining. And Kate Burgess at the line for the second. Shot up, no good. Rebound off to Bowden. Gets it to Vashon. Vashon races across half court. Looks to go to the middle. Does. Left hand left. Going to be blocked by Brown. And it will stay with the Coney Rams. Vashon to key it in under her own basket. Looking to go inside. Ball's going to be knocked loose. Picked up by Knoyer. Takes it back out as we approach the two and a half minute mark. With Coney up by seven. Ball's going to be knocked loose. It's going by Betsy Buecher. Nakomis looking to make a run. And they get another this time by both. So with 2.31 remaining, down seven, Coney committing a couple of fouls here. This time, Buker's going to be at the line to shoot a foul shot. Not only is Coach Vashon losing, losing some players by the foul line, but it's also allowing Nakomas to score some hoops with the clock not running. Exactly what the doctor ordered as far as Nakomas is concerned. And certainly not the kind of medicine Coach Vashon and the Coney Rams want right now. First shot up by Buecher is good. And this is as close, Dick, as the Warriors have been for a long time. You're right. Nakomas has a chance to narrow that gap to five. Off the back of the rim, no good. Rebound's going to be knocked loose and picked up by Erskine. She's going to be tied up. Possession hour belongs to Coney, I believe. And it does. Good hustling play by Erskine. 2.28 remaining. Nakomas trails by six. They come out in full court pressure. Ball inbounded to LaFerriere. Double team. And Erskine's going to be called for the foul on Vashon on the double team. And that's going to be four on Erskine. 
And the Comas fans start to get excited here as Farrell comes out of the ball game in favor of Coughlin for Coney. Now you're back in a situation. If you're Coney, now you've got to make these foul shots down the end because Nokomis will only put you to the line. I'll tell you, if you want uh, somebody on the foul line, you certainly want Bash on. He's just had a great day today. And for change, I don't jinx somebody. She <laughs> nails the first one. 70 to 63, 224 remaining. The Coney lead is seven. Second shot up is good by Vash. Under the leads back up to eight at 71-63. Buker working against pressure by Vashon. Gets it to Erskine on the left. Erskine penetrates on the right-hand side. Burgess shot up by Burgess. No good air ball. Rebound off to Coney. Pridham gets it off to Vashon. We're at the two-minute mark. The Coney lead is eight. See if they're going to spread the floor just a little bit and run into the little delay. Vashon working against Grumbach. Off to Coughlin on the side. She tries to hide baseline, nothing there. Vashon back door to Pridham, left hand layup. Pridham around her and good! And Pridham gets the shooter's bounce, and it's 73 63. Inside, they go to Burgess. Burgess off the glass and in. Good! Columbus trying to get time out, and they do, just barely in time, with 129 remaining, 73-65, the Columbus trails by eight. We'll be back in 30 seconds. Okay, back here at the Bangor Auditorium, let's set the stage for the remaining 129 of this one. The Columbus trails it by eight, 73-65. A couple of their starters on the bench. It'll be interesting to see the strategy here. As Coney has possession, but they've got to go the length of the floor. Noria's going to key it in for the Coney Rams. Full court pressure by the Comas. Double team, the Ferrier gets it to Basham. That's who Coney wants to handle basketball. Ball's going to be stolen away by Erskine at half court. On the left side to Buker. Three point attempt by Buker. No, short. Ball's rebounded by Grumbach. On the right-hand side, Grumbach. Skips pass to Buker. Long three-pointer by Buker is off the front of the rim, no good. Rebound this time is gonna be tied up. This time it goes to the Comas, so the Comas coach is still hanging around. They're right there. And again, the Comas here, they just need to drop one of those threes, although, you know, they just gotta rebound that, that miss and put it right back in if they can. Okay, Brown outside to Buker. Baseline to Grumbach. Grumbach tries to take a baseline, short jump shot up by Grumbach. No good, this time we're gonna have a foul. Looks like it's gonna be on LaFerriere as Grumbach goes to the floor. Laura, is Laura does a nice job of creating contact. She didn't have that outside shot, so she took the step by and just goes in there and goes strong to the basket looking for the contact and looking for that three-point play the old-fashioned way. Crucial, crucial foul shots. First one by Grumbach's good. 73-66, the lead is seven for the Rams of Coney with 57 seconds remaining in this one. Grumbach will have another. The 5'9", junior guard for the Nokomis Warriors. Dip shoots, good on that. And Coney gets the ball inbound, working against all kinds of pressure. Penoria is gonna take it across half court. She's gonna be fouled just as she crosses half court. Good play by Nokomis now. You're putting somebody to the line who hasn't been there yet uh, today. Key now, if you're Nokomis, you just can't give up any offensive rebounds. You must get, get the defensive board. Penoyer at the line with a one and one and it's all net. Great job of concentration and making the important uh, free throws. Senior experience of Lynn Kenoyer, the 5'3 guard, Certainly showing there. Second shot up by Knoyer is around the rim, no good. Rebound Brown. Up to Erskine. Taking it coast to coast is Erskine. She's going to be fouled, but it looks like LaFerriere. So again, good job by Erskine, not allowing a lot of time to go off the clock. Taking it right to LaFerriere. 
Okay, with that, Coach Paul Vash on watch timeout. We'll be back in one minute. Okay, back here at the Bangor City Auditorium. Ronda Erskine with a chance to narrow the gap. Dip shoots and good. 74-68, the lead is cut to six. It's important that Nokomis finds their, their players right now because they need that inbounds pass or at least a quick foul. Second shot is good too. Nice move by Charlie Wing here in the substitution to stop the clock and give them a chance to set the defense. Boy, they better pick up Canoyer though. In the Ferriere, as Erskine comes out of the ball game, all alone, nobody sees her. Knoyer to get into the Ferriere, and this time, Ferriere is going to be fouled by Tonya Draper. Boy, I tell you, they had an easy layup. If anybody had seen Knoyer, she was all alone in her front court, but nobody could see her. But the Ferriere is going to go to the line with a chance to increase the five point Coney lead. Now, if you're Coney, obviously you need to make the one and one here. But rather you, uh, whether you do or not, the key is to make Nokomis take some time on the offensive end. You don't want your players fouling, but you do want them playing defense. First shot is good by Laferriere. Leads back up to six. This is a big foul shot, really, Dick. We make it a three, uh, three possession game as far as Nokomis is concerned. Second shot by Laferriere. Dip shoots and good, and it will be a three possession game. The Ferriere, Draper. It's going to come into the ball game. She can't yet, though. She can't yet. They're not going to allow her to come in simply because she, no time has been run off the clock yet. Buker to Erskine. On the right side to Grumbach. Grumbach's going to go right out. Laferriere takes the shot. Laferriere is going to foul her. Boy, and that's exactly what Coach Paul Vashon didn't want to see. With 36 seconds remaining, his team up seven. They don't want that clock to stop. And it's a tough situation if you if you're Tammy uh, Laferriere there too, because you know it's a tough situation. I, I don't know if she really committed the foul. She was just in the area, and officials at this time of the ball, of the ball game are quick with a whistle. Run back, makes the first one, and narrow the gap to six. 76-70 with 36 seconds remaining in this Eastern Maine. Class A girls quarterfinal action. Number two, Coney coming in at 16-2 against number seven, Nokomis, coming in at 11-7. Certainly, Coney has had all they could have wanted to. As Grunback nails the second one, the lead is five, 76-71. Nokomis down five. Foul's gonna be on Stevens. Pretty aggressive foul on Vashon. Vashon will go to the line and shoot one and one. Coney doing a nice job of, first of all, getting an inbounds, and then secondly, once they get to the foul line, concentrating and, and making those free throws. In addition, I think, Coach, they're doing a nice job also, once they get an inbounds, of getting it into the hands of the people that they want it to, they are. to handle the basketball. And they're spreading out the defense also. They're sending somebody deep so you're not playing 10 on 10 in the half, uh, five on five in the half court. Vashon makes the first to make the lead six with 33 seconds remaining. She'll have another. And she makes the second one all net. 78 71, the lead is seven. Amy Vashon is nine for 10 from the foul line now. We're under 30 seconds. Grumbach working against Kanoya. Three pointed by Grumbach. Air ball. Rebound. Going to be knocked out of bounds. Off Nakomis. It will go to Coney. With 21 seconds remaining, Nokomis needs the basketball and needs some threes. Inbound, they get to Vashon, and Grumbach is going to follow Vashon. That may be her fifth. That is her fifth. I tell you what, Grumbach's had a, had a super, super year. A nice game today by Laura Grumbach. She's a great player, and she'll be back again. And she has 26 points today, well above her 15-point average. Plays the whole game very well and shoots the ball with as fine a technique as you'll see. The thing I like the most, I think, about her is that she has a nose for the basket. She knows what to do when she gets the basketball. She has great basketball instincts. Vashon 
Makes it 79-71 with 19 seconds remaining. It's just beginning to look like Coney's going to advance to play the Black Raiders of Winslow in Thursday night's first semifinal game. She makes the second, it's 80 to 71. The lead is now nine. Penny Stevens working against Kenoyer. The ball's gonna be stolen away by Farrell. She's gonna be fouled by Penny Stevens. So I think it's safe to say at this point, Thursday night, first girls semifinal action will involve the Coney Rams and the Winslow Black Raiders, who split, I believe, on the They year. did split on the in the regular season. And Winslow, as people uh, saw earlier today, is really a nice basketball team. Coach Brenda Beckwith of the Winslow Black Raiders does a wonderful job. She does, and gets her players to play defense. They're a good defensive team. Plus, they've got uh, three key players that they're able to, to handle the ball well. And it will give Coney a lot of problems uh, in the pressure situation. That should be a very interesting semifinal game. Farrell at the line. First one's good by Farrell. It's 81-71. Comas has played very well, and if anybody would think there was uh, going to be 162 points and uh, that many points on the board, that it wouldn't have been that close. But it's just great to see a high school girls game with a score in the 80s and 70s. No question, as time's running out here, shot up on the baseline by Burgess, no good. Rebound by Brown, she's gonna be fouled with one second remaining on the clock. So Danielle Brown, a 5'7 junior forward for Coach Wing, and the Warriors, will have a chance to make a couple of foul shots. I'd like to see her make, her, uh, make two here, because she's played very well today, and she deserves it. Around the rim, oh, a shooter's bounce. I think they heard you, Coach. Shooter's bounce with, without a lot of spin on the ball. Either. Good job. All net that time, it's 82-73. That's gonna be it. The Coney Rams with an 82-73 quarterfinal victory will play Winslow in Thursday night's first semifinal game. We'll be back with a final look at this one and a look at the rest of our schedule for today after this two-minute break.